Hi everyone, thanks. I'm Sean Gorman and uh, first time giving an Ignite talk, so hopefully I don't stumble around too much. But I wanted to talk about human sensors and, and some of the work we've been doing, tapping into human sensors to find out information. And usually when I think about human sensors, it's snow crash and gargoyles and people with headsets piping in information in, and circulating that around, a bit of the science fiction side of things. But in the reality, what we've seen this evolve into is something much different, that really the sensor is now the phone. And the phone is attached with GPS, it takes time, it takes date. Um, people attach sensors for chemical detection and uh, temperature, uh, astrophorics, um, all sorts of fascinating information being piped into the phone on a regular basis. And it's created this really large ecosystem, right? This great graphic from just three, 5.3 million mobile devices that are out there, a huge number of services that are tapping into those mobile devices and creating all sorts of fascinating services and collecting lots of great information from social media to apps and across the board. And so some of the cool things people have been building, climate projects getting ecological and climate change information like Ergo, election monitoring like Yushihidi, real-time road conditions from folks like Waze, disaster response, GeoChat, Yushihidi again, pedestrian traffic from Footpath. Um, so a lot of cool stuff. The thing we've been thinking about is opinion polling. And, you know, traditionally opinion polling is some weird guy coming up asking a lot of questions. Traditionally this is done by people like Gallup, IRI, Nielsen, folks along those lines, and using really traditional methods. You know, the stuff that you see in Mad Men, it really hasn't changed a lot, right? The standard Gallup poll is about 1,400 people. A focus group is five to 10 people in a room. But the nice thing of this is it's a really controlled sample size, right? They, they know it's an unbiased sample of a, of a very dedicated group of people, and it's created information for decades that have informed a whole lot of things. But now we have this new school polling coming out, right? Things like Twitter emerging, and you can go search Anthony Weiner um, frowny face and see all the people seeing negative stuff about Anthony Weiner in real time, and it's coming through of millions of tweets on any particular topic at any given time. So we thought, this is awesome. Let's map it out, see where it's at where it happens at time and place. So these are tweets around Hosni Mubarak's resignation speech. And we really wanted to get into that. I was a public policy nerd, so I really wanted to see geopolitical events and see how that varied over time. What's the sentiment? How many people heard it? What does the analysis look like? So let's take all those tweets, aggregate them by country, look at the average sentiment, look at the sample size, look at the stability index on those places. And sure enough, when we aggregated it up, the people that were excited about the uh, revolt were the people that revolted not far after, UAE, Bahrain, um, I'm sorry, not UAE, Yemen, Tunisia, Libya, a lot of those folks. Um, did the same thing with bin Laden. We said, wow, Mubarak was cool. Let's see about bin Laden, the demise. Where were people talking about it? What were they saying? We saw a huge volume of tweets coming through, a lot of those coming from mobile devices. Similar kind of analysis, and we see a lot of similar people. So, you know, who was, who was saying really positive things about bin Laden? Saudi Arabia, Kenya, uh, France, interestingly enough. Um, uh, Yemen and different places like that, who are saying negative things, how did that change over time, what does the sample size look like? But it doesn't always have to be serious geopolitical things, right? It can be fun, frivolous stuff, the royal wedding. So here we see somebody saying, enough of the royal wedding, I can't stand it, don't turn on CNN. But see the size of the icon there, it was the number of people that heard that tweet. Not all tweets are equal, right? Some people five here, some people millions here. Um, so looking at that, aggregating it at a micro level, also doesn't be at the country level. We can look at districts across the UK, who was loving the royal wedding, who was fed up with it, what was the sample size in each one of those locations, so how many people were saying it. Um, so lots of interesting statistics piping across these and Twitter just being one thing. So it's all really cool, right? But there's some serious problems with using this stuff and we see it as we see more things emerging and there's sample bias, right? So you're just talking about people on Twitter or Facebook or Flickr or Foursquare and those are highly biased samples. There's also margin of error. How many people are saying this, right? Does one person say it 20? Um, also geocoding, fuzzy place. So we really dove into this with an experiment for the Oscars. We grabbed 1.5 million tweets, we looked at sentiment, we looked at location, we aggregated by geography, and really see if we can dive into some of these hairy issues that we wanted to solve with really analyzing social media. So some of the big stuff was diving into margin of error, right? How many people are saying this and what's the meaning? Because every time you see a Gallup poll, right, plus or minus 5%, 1.5 million tweets, plus or minus 0.08%, which is pretty awesome, but it's not evenly distributed. In New York, it was only 2,000 people, which is like a 7% uh, sample, or margin of error. Also, place is very fuzzy, right? You, you see these maps of tweets and they put points everywhere, right? But that point is not always where the tweet came from, necessarily. So you get something like Washington, D.C., right? Is D.C. the District of Columbia? Is it the uh, CMSA? Or is it that point right in the middle of on top? So what we do is break that out and really think about it. So let's pull out just the mobile tweets that have a GPS associated with it. You know that plus or minus three meters. GOIP, we don't know exactly where that is, probably in the neighborhood. Profile tweets, we may know the city. So let's aggregate it to a boundary that we understand, like a DMA. Um, and then we can really get an understanding of it. But if it was one thing for sure is that our future cells are getting more and more interconnected by location, opinions becoming more and more persistent, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing remains to be seen, but it's definitely a whole new world that we can mine and, and hopefully understand. Thanks.